In this video, we'll be completing the setup of our 3D printer now that it's connected to our Sonic pad using Clipper. This is part two of the setup process. If you haven't seen part one, click the link up here and go and watch that first. In the last stage of part one of my setup guide, we were told that our Sonic pad was successfully connected to our 3D printer. After selecting next step, we were told that our Sonic pad will enter the self test procedure. Before doing this, we're advised to check that our Sonic pad is connected to our 3D printer. We know that it is because the last page told us that it was. We're told that we need to ensure the printer's hotbed surface is clean and that the self test procedure will take about 30 minutes. In my experience, it takes a lot less time than this. Once you're ready, select to start the self test. The first thing your Sonic pad will do is send a command to your 3D printer telling it to run the hot end cooling fan. If your 3D printer is the same as mine, then your hot end cooling fan may have already been running. The important thing is that your part cooling fan or fans don't start running at this stage. If they do, you'll need to investigate why before going any further. The most likely reason for this to be wrong is that for some reason, your fans are plugged into the wrong ports on the control board. If no other fans come on and your hot end fan is running, select the next step. We now need to check the exact same thing with the part cooling fan. If the part cooling fan starts okay, then click on next step. The Sonic pad will now run you through manually leveling or tramming your bed, setting a Z offset, and then creating a bed mesh if you run a bed probe and are using a standard Creality 3D printer. The method to use without a bed probe is slightly different, so make sure you follow the on-screen instructions if you have a setup that's different from mine. Also, if you've connected your Sonic pad to a non-Creality 3D printer, then you may find that you won't be taken through all of the setup processes I'm about to show. Unfortunately, your route to creating a bed mesh and Z offset is not quite so automated, and you'll need to send some commands to run through the same processes. Check out my Sonic Pad playlist for videos that show you how to complete the stages that yours misses out. What you're told to do with a Creality printer is tighten all four bed springs until you can't tighten them any further. Creality's thinking here is that it will give you a level base to start from before setting the Z offset. Once you've done this, move to the next step. The Sonic pad will then home all three axes on your printer, leaving the nozzle some distance from your bed. You need to then adjust your Z height until the nozzle is just touching or fractionally above your bed. You can use paper or feeler gauges if you can't see it, but it's not super critical to get this perfect at this stage. You can select different increments for Z axis movement, so when you get closer, switch to smaller increments. Once your nozzle is fractionally above your bed, select stop and then move to the next step. Your printer will again home all three axes and leave the nozzle a distance from your bed. However, now you'll have numbered positions that you can select on your screen, which correspond to positions just above the adjustment screws on your bed. Select position one, and the nozzle will move to a short distance above the bed adjuster at the front left corner of your bed. Once it stops, loosen the adjuster until the bed is around one millimeter from the nozzle and press button two. The nozzle will then move to just above the right front adjuster where you can repeat the same process, leaving around one millimeter gap between the bed and nozzle. Repeat for all four positions. Then go back to position one and set the gap accurately. This time use something like a sheet of paper or a feeler gauge to adjust the gap between the bed and the nozzle in all four corners until you are happy that the gap is the same in all positions. Keep moving between positions until you're sure it's right. Don't rush this stage because if done right, you won't need to come back to this for a while. Once you're happy, move to the next step. This is where we'll create a bed mesh and we find out how well you did in the last stage. Before you start the calibration, you can select temperature setup and heat the bed to around 50 degrees before starting, but I just started the process as I wanted to see how much it changed with heat afterwards. When you click on start calibration, the printer will start probing the bed and creating a bed mesh. If you've never done this before, or you've never seen the results of a bed mesh, then you may find this bit interesting. What you'll be able to see is how flat your bed actually is. I have a glass bed on my Ender 3 version too, so not surprisingly, it's pretty flat. Once you finish looking at your mesh, and after clicking on the next step, you'll be congratulated and told that your printer is in perfect condition and you are ready to start your printing journey. However, it's not quite that simple and there's just one more thing to do before we start printing. When you select the option to start your experience, it may look like everything has gone wrong and you'll start seeing some error codes. Don't panic, all that's happening is the Sonic pad and printer are restarting and trying to connect to each other again. Give it time, and after a minute or so, you should be taken to the main user interface and you can start controlling your 3D printer using your Sonic pad. That one last thing I suggested you do before starting to print is to set your Z offset again. Select configure, 
then probe calibration and you'll be presented with the same screen you saw earlier during the setup stage. Again, adjust the Z offset until the nozzle is just kissing the bed, but this time be as accurate as you can. I'd suggest using a feeler gauge and adjusting the Z offset until you start to feel the nozzle just touching it. Remove the gauge and then move the Z offset down the thickness of the gauge you just used. For example, I used a 0.1 millimeter gauge, so I then adjust the Z offset another 0.1 millimeters. Click OK, and then the Sonic Pad will reboot, saving your new Z offset. Click here for a tour of all the options you now have in the user interface on your Sonic Pad, where I'll show you how to find and start a print file. Or skip straight to the intermediate Sonic Pad series, where we start to tune our setup to improve quality and print speed by clicking here. I'll see you there.